Alrighty, what is up you guys, it's your boy Rob Hollowavers back again uh, with another kind of reaction, kind of just chatting thing. We're here just to hang out, probably not going to be the longest stream, because uh, today, uh, a few hours ago, the Game Awards uh, just revealed their Games of the Year. Obviously the Game Awards are going to be in just under a month, I believe 24 days until the Game Awards in December. Let me turn down that music a bit. There we go. Some nice background ambiance as we uh, check out not only the nominees, but we are going to vote uh, on our games of the years. Um, I feel like I did a good amount this year. Not everything I would have wanted. There's still a few in the bank that I'm going to try and squeeze in before the end of this year. Um... There's some categories that I care about a little more than others. I'm, of course, a action player. I'm an RPG player. Um, so I'm going to care more about those games than, uh, say, sports, esports. Never, never did it for me. Uh, but we are going to react, see what we got. Obviously, there are a few categories that I'm interested in. I'm always interested in music. Always interested in, like, sound design. Uh, always interested in gameplay. Uh, and always interested in story. Story is always big for me. And then there's obviously game of the year. The ones that are most likely for me, uh, I'm betting right now, that's obviously always the biggest category, right? The game of the year. What is the game of the year this year? It's going to come down to Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Which, if you watch my stream, you know I love the game. It's it had issues, but I loved the game. Um, I thought it was great, and it's gonna be the big family one. Everyone, yeah. Um, Spider Man Two, which I loved. I loved Spider Man Two. Um, uh, Al Alan Wake Two, which I have not yet played. I want to do Alan Wake and Alan Wake Two. The plan was to do Alan Wake on Halloween, got away from me. Um. So I want to try and do Alan Wake, Alan Wake 2. I've heard, I've heard, here in raid reviews. Um, Spider-Man. Uh, and, of course, Baldur's Gate 3, which I'm still streaming. I've streamed 18 streams of Baldur's Gate, and I am loving every minute of it. It's so phenomenal. Uh, that's kind of what I'm betting is going to win. And I think that might be what my vote is for. Spoiler alert, I'm, I'm going to give it some more thought. They usually do five. I don't know who my fifth one is going to be. Uh, so that's where I'm at for now. That's my thought process. I'm going to stop chatting. Let's just dive in and uh, ba -ba -ba, pop over here. The Game Awards, December 7th, the Peacock Theater. Uh, all right. So they have gone live. Let us vote. Should I view the categories first? Fine, we'll view all categories. Ready? Uh, all right, that's good. Let's just start voting. We'll do it as we go, right? We'll vote as we vote now. Ah, no, wait. All right. Oh, Resident Evil 4 and Mario Brothers Wonder. Okay. So it is the games I thought. We're starting with Game of the Year. The biggest one. I Again, I've heard phenomenal things about Alan Wake 2. I really like Remedy as a studio. Um, I enjoyed both of these a lot. I, I did Mario Bros. Wonder in a week where I was sick two weeks ago. I was uh, quarantined at home. 
and I, I crushed Mario Wonders in a week. I've been playing it on and off in my free time. I've been bringing my Switch around, and it's a lot of fun. Tears of the Kingdom was beautiful. Zelda is my favorite franchise of all time. So I still have a Zelda. I have Zelda merch everywhere. I have Zelda tattoos. It's it's my number one franchise. I loved Marvel's Spider-Man 2 was my most looked forward to game this year. And I feel like it did not disappoint. I feel like this would be my game of the year. Were it not for the Dark Horse. I love Baldur's Gate 3. And I feel like more than that, I feel like Larian Studios, who did not expect it to be anywhere near as big as it was, I think they deserve Game of the Year. I'm a huge D&D fan. How many dice are within reach of me right now? One. Well, technically, I have my thing under my desk. So technically, over 30 sets of dice because I have multiple in there. There's four over there, one right next to me. The four that I roll, and then one for every energy type. My hero dice, my villain dice, and then d- dice for four or five different characters. Too many. I love D and D, and this it just feels so good. It feels so D and D. I want to finish Act Three, which I'm gonna try and do this week and next week. Um, I got a little more Genshin to do, but I'm gonna try and finish it this week. So my vote goes to Baldur's Gate Three. I think it deserves it, Larian. Overall, story, gameplay, they they translate 5e's gameplay so well into a game. All right, next category. What do we got? Best game direction. Ooh, award for outstanding creative vision. Um... I feel like Tears of the Kingdom was a little scattered in the uh, in the area of game direction. And again, I've heard great things about Alan Wake 2, but it's the only one I have not played on this list. So I cannot in good conscience vote for it, which is probably going to be disappointing and probably deserves it. Because th- that's a game that's very cinemagraphic. It's very ma- directed. From what I from the remedy games I've played, I'm going to give this though to Marvel Spider Man Two. I feel like the flow of the game, the progression, the point A to point B, you know, it worked so well, and I feel like that's fair. I feel like Marvel Spider Man Two, like the, the the story flows so well, especially the Peter half, the Miles half, uh. Yeah, all the stuff with Martin Lee was actually really great. I'm going to give it to Marvel Spider-Man 2. I think it has the best direction. Okay, moving on. Best narrative. Oh, and you got Phantom Liberty, which I have not played, and Final Fantasy 16, which I was looking forward to. My top three looking forward to games of the year was number one was Spider-Man, number two was Tears of the Kingdom, number three was Final Fantasy 16. Uh, I feel like 16 was a little disappointing, um, but I still loved it. I streamed it all on Twitch. You can check it out on YouTube. I'm going to go though for narrative. The na- the thing that's given me the most narrative juice has been Baldur's Gate. Again, maybe that's the D and D player in me. Maybe that's because I I've been uh I've DM'd just truly so many times and I've played so truly so many games that um. The 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 the, the, bu- the storytelling and all the sides it's so satisfying narratively. But which narrative flows the best? Which story was the most satisfying? I loved the the crystals. I loved the the ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, uh. You know what? I think I'm gonna go Spider Man again. Maybe it's just maybe it's just the, the the comic nerd in me. I'm a JRPG nerd. I'm a D and D nerd, and I'm a comic book nerd. I'm also a horror nerd and a cyberpunk nerd. And this is just, but I haven't played Phantom Liberty. I haven't even played Cyberpunk yet. I haven't played Phantom Liberty, and I haven't played the Alan Wake games. So this is devastating. That I know I should be voting for these, but uh, I'm torn between these three. Best story, 
the the big act structure, and I feel like I am thinking more of the side and ancillary quests in Baldur's Gate 3, because that's always the distraction. I, I want to do everything. So it doesn't flow as much. Same with Final, uh, with Final Fantasy. I feel like short, sweet, it was a 20-something hour game with an inc- immensely packed and satisfying narrative. Spidey. Best art direction. Ooh. Haven't done Hi-Fi Rush either. But I have, in my free time, been playing Lives of P. The steampunk Pinocchio Bloodborne. You know what, though? I'm going to give it to... uh, I feel like the direction for Tears of the Kingdom was really cool. But it was too much like Breath of the Wild for me to be shocked and awed. The one that I thought was phenomenal this year was Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I'm voting for it. I'm done. Every time you picked up a wonder seed, it was say- insane. The uh, I'd gone back and, and played New Super Mario Brothers U again, and the difference in how expressive the characters are in Wonder, how they were animated, and how just life, how full of life and charisma and charm every character, every enemy, the world. Oh, it's yeah. It's Super Mario Bros. Wonder. May sound silly having a little cartoonish one. Uh, oh. I, I I know I've heard a little bit of the music from Hi Fi Rush. Um, the some of those fight scenes in Baldur's Gate, particularly against Titan. Uh, and um, Bahamut were the music was so good. I'm going to go though the Nintendo Sound Team. the The music in Tears of the Kingdom was peak. It's I put it up there with um, I have Wind Waker and Twilight Princess is I think the best music in Zelda, and this is more musically inclined than Breath of the Wild was. Breath of the Wild used more naturalistic sounds. I feel like there was more music in Tears of the Kingdom, and that's why it's going to get my vote here. I feel like that's right. Best audio design. Ugh. Only one game I played on this list. Uh, But again, I have watched some video of Hi-Fi Rush, so I think I'm actually going to give this to Hi-Fi Rush. I, again, I haven't played it in its entirety, so I can't do too much. Okay, best performance. So we have Ben Starr from Final Fantasy uh, 16, Cameron Moynihan from Jedi Survivor. I forgot Jedi Survivor came out this year. And it wasn't even in the... T- Jedi Survivor was so much fun, and it wasn't even a Game of the Year candidate. Idris Elba, Phantom Liberty... Uh, Milani LeBird from Alan Wake 2. Neil Newborn from Baldur's Gate 3. Yuri Lowenthal from Spider-Man 2. Oh. Ready? I want to check something out. Neil... Uh, newborn. He's a Starian. Yeah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. He's kind of like the face of, of BG3. Um, I feel like Yuri did amazing as Peter, particularly when he was uh, venomized and all raged out. Idris Elba is a goat for the reason. For me right now, my money's between Ben Starr and Cameron Moynihan. Because um, the sheer emotionality of both characters of Clive and um why am I blanking on his name and Cal, and Cal Kestis, um were were so good they had they they both had sheer raw incredible emotionality and range i think for the character arc and the way it was portrayed, I'm going to give it to Cameron Moynihan. I think I liked Cal's performance a little better. Innovation in accessibility. 
recognizing software and or hardware that pushes the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games get a wider audience. MK1, Street Fighter, Diablo 4, Forza, Hi-Fi Rush, Marvel. Again, I'm going to give it to the one I did. And I, yeah. Now, here we are. Games for Impact. Okay. Uh, for a thought-provoking game uh, with a pro-social meaning or message. A Space for the Unbound. Chance of Sinar. Goodbye Volcano High. Tachia. Terranil or Venba. I very much wanted to play Goodbye Volcano High, Tachia, and Terra Nil. It's it's produced by Netflix. That's kind of interesting. Those were both three games that I really wanted to play. Uh, and maybe if I get time, in addition to Alan Wake one and two, I'm gonna maybe I'll try and squeeze them in this year. And then regret voting on one of them. I think I'm going to go... From what I've heard... Um, I think I'm going to vote Terranel. Again, these are based on the reviews of people that I trust. Friends. People I've had conversations about. Okay. Best ongoing game. A word for a game that evolves... Uh, you got Apex, which is the number one. You got Cyberpunk, because they just released Phantom Liberty, and they have done phenomenally in coming back from the train wreck that was the launch of Cyberpunk. Final Fantasy XIV. I have so many people in the trenches of Final Fantasy XIV in my orbit, so I hear nonstop about XIV. Fortnite, which I still play in the background every now and then. I play Fortnite. Uh, and Genshin Impact. And you know what I'm going to vote for. Because it's the game that I play probably the most on stream. I'm going to play... I'm going to vote Genshin. Because Fontaine has been phenomenal. The OST playing in the background behind me right now is the new Fontaine Genshin OST. Because this year's content... We got a little bit... We finished Sumeru, which was alright. The Sumeru content this year has been pretty good. Uh, nothing ground uh, shaking. I guess the Apep storyline, the heated second story quest was phenomenal. But... Everything from Fontaine has been... It's the best underwater gameplay I've ever done in a non... Like, like Abzu or anything like that that's specifically underwater. Yeah, it's phenomenal, but this is a game that's it just introduced, hey, diving and swimming underwater, and it flows so well. The game is so much fun. The music's great. The writing has never been better. I cried on two different streams because of this game. The most two recent streams I did. Uh, Farina's story quest and the end of Act 5. Yes, the, uh, so I'm voting Genshin. What else we got? Best community support. Recognize the game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. All right, Destiny... <laughs> no Man's Sky. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Destiny 2, Cyberpunk, or Baldur's Gate. You know what? In... in uh, I feel like No Man's Sky has gotten recognition for how much it's bound, bounced back. Final Fantasy XIV is always phenomenal with the community support. Destiny 2 has been scrambling as of late after all the layoffs that just happened at Bungie. Uh, and Baldur's Gate has been doing phenomenal. But I'm going to give this to Cyberpunk for how much they've managed to claw their way back over the past few years and how well-received Phantom Liberty has been. I'm going to give it to Cyberpunk. Best Indie. Most outstanding creative, uh, da, da, da. uh, the two games on this that I really wanted to play were Cocoon and Sea of Stars. Um, whew. although I have, I did like the trailer for Dave the Diver, I haven't seen a lot of it though. Um, uh, I haven't heard. Also, haven't seen a lot out of Sabotage Studio. I love Annapurna Interactive, and I know they can do no wrong in their games. 
Um, so I think I'm going to give it to... Uh, I think I'm going to give it to Sea of Stars, though. These are the cat categories they're going to get blown through, which is a shame. Oh, and here, and, and I'll give uh, Best Debut Indie Game to uh, Cocoon. There we go. Best Mobile Game. Terra Nil, Monster Hunter Now, Honkai Star Rail, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, and Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Applebot and Square, a, a complete retelling of the Final Fantasy story is cool. Again, Terra Nil, heard a lot of good things, but you know I'm giving it to Honkai. Mi Hoyo and the Hoyoverse have been doing, have been on fire. I only, I've still only done one stream of Honkai Star Rail and had to get back into it, but it just, it's so friggin' cool. All right, next. Where are we at? We're at 14 out of 31. We're about halfway there. Best VR AR? Um, ooh. I'm not a VR player. I'll give it to Horizon. Hey, cut on a break. That's studio. I'm not really a VR player. Makes me dizzy. Best action game. Okay. So we have Remnant 2. Hi-Fi Rust, Ghost Runner 2, Dead Island 2, and Armored Core Fires of the Rubicon. So From Software, Deep Silver. I'm shocked Dead Island 2 is as good as it is. People have been talking about that. Do I want to do Dead Island 2 as well? Oh my god, there's too many games out, you know? I also like 505 Studios. Uh, because of it's the pro I, I mean I probably watched the most hi-fi rush but I think I'm gonna give it to Dead Island 2 for how successfully they managed a way to claw their back from the brink because Dead Island 2 has been in dev hell for years and it's getting phenomenal reviews and everything I've seen and people are, I've only talked to one or two people about it uh, best action game uh, I loved the combat in Jedi Survivor. I loved the insane things you could do with puzzle solving in Tears of the Kingdom. And same with Spidey. So I think for the traversal and puzzle aspect, which were just so game changing, I'm going to give it to Zelda. I think that's fair. Best RPG. Oh, I'm, I gotta, I do want to at least have one vote for Final Fantasy 16 under my belt and one vote for Lives of P under my belt. But I, I feel like in good conscience, I can't give it to anything other than Baldur's Gate 3 because it is the preeminent RPG of the year. It is the RPG. It's literally the role-playing game based on the role-playing game, you know? I have to, I have to do it. Best fighting game... I'm not a fighting game guy. So I'll uh I'll give it to MK1. I'm not a fighting game guy. I like fighting games, I'm not good at them. Uh best family game. I am going to oh, Pikmin 4 came out this year. <sighs> Sonic Superstars, it's in my PS5 right now. I was gonna play it tonight, but uh I'm going to give it to Super Mario Bros. Wonder, though. Because, I feel, again, I feel like it was, it was, it was one of like, the sweetest, most fun. Best Sim Strategy. Uh, let's give it to Fire Emblem Engage. Sports. Uh, 
Uh, I don't want to vote. I'm definitely not. Uh, let's go Forza. I'm not. A, I I don't care about racing games at all, unless they got Mario or Disney characters in them. Nah, I'm good. Or Diddy Kong, Crash Bandicoot. No, thank you. Uh, best multiplayer support. Uh, you know it's Baldur's Gate three. Uh, two of my side characters I've been playing with other people, and the situations that friends come up with is so much fun and it's so crazy. Although I guess the ghost system in Mario Wonder was really cool. Best adaptation. Castle. Okay. Hmm. Castlevania Nocturne, which I have not yet watched. I love the OG Castlevania series. Oh, uh, so yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be between last of us. And for me, the super Mario brothers movie. Pedro Pascal is is a, a phenomenon. A, a phenomenon. He is a being that should not make sense and should not exist, and but he is perfect in every way. And but this was something special. I know it did not get perfect reviews, and not everyone loved it. My very first video game of all time was Super Mario Brothers. Playing, sitting in my family's living room on a blue carpet in front of a giant box, boxy, deep, deep back TV. The NES controller in my hand with my dad sitting right behind me, telling me every single move is one of my earliest memories. Mario's always, and then Zelda after that, but Mario's always had a special place in my heart. And I, yeah, some of the voice acting was specific, mainly on the part of Mario and DK. But I think Charlie Day did phenomenal. I think Keegan uh, Key did uh, phenomenal. Jack Black, Anya Taylor Joy. Um, the and I feel like I they they didn't really need to do as much modern music because you have the entire library of. Mario's music, but in Last of Us, the interpretation of the story of what they told, how they're progressing. Mm. Everything they did with Bill, everything. Oh. Again, I feel like, I think I got to give it to The Last of Us. Because of how well they adapted it, I think Last of Us deserves it. Because it was a true adaptation, you know? Okay. Most anticipated game. Tekken, Star Wars, Outlaws, Hades 2, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Okay. Uh, I love the Like a Dragon series, the Yakuza series in the US. Um, Hades 2. I have Hades 1 that I haven't played. I know I have to. Star Wars Outlaws came out of nowhere and looked phenomenal, but you know I already pre-ordered the Deluxe Collector's Edition of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I got Cloud Strife on the motorcycle from Final Fantasy VII Remake up there. Sephiroth's going to go right on top of my fridge because that statue is huge. You know I'm voting for Rebirth, which is coming out in a few months. That blows my mind. It's coming out early 2024, and I am so excited. All right. Content Creator of the Year. Ooh. Oh, I was, I, I saw Quackity first and I'm like, it's going to be Quackity, but no, it's got to be Iron Mouse. She has brightened my day. She is the, a very funny, very wholesome, but also really not a uh, VTuber. Uh, that I know she's been creating for years, but she really blew up this year and everything she's done with Connor is phenomenal. I got to vote for Mouse. I'm not even like a super VTuber guy. Maybe I'll make a VTuber one day. I don't know. But I she's just too good. Best esports. Um it's Valorant, right? There you go. Okay, best esports. It's gotta be Valorant. They're doing really well. It's gotta be Val. Best esports athlete. Ah, uh, you. 
That guy. Can you tell I care a lot about esports? Uh, you. This is a category? Holm, Mugzax, Gunba, Zanek, Potter. Uh, you. Let's pick the first one. All right. Oh. I earned a badge. Voted in all categories. There are badges. Sure, I'll download that. Whatever. All right, so that is it. Let's exit the voting. All right, that was uh, pretty solid, guys. They got some good stuff this year. I am very much looking forward to watching this live December 7th. You can join me here uh, to check that out. Uh, we're probably going to watch the pre-show and all the stuff leading up to it. Because, you know, half the awards are done in the pre-shows. And all the awards that are going to come out, but. Yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, I think that's where I'm going to call it. Uh, because it is almost 2 a.m. for me. Um, and I still have actual work to do before work in uh, five hours. So I got to do a bunch of paperwork. So I'm going to call it for now. Thank you so much for joining me. But Belle Fleur, always good to see you. Um, yeah, that's it for this thing that I'm doing. Until next time, stay awesome. Night. Hmm, I'm not sure. What? Not you. Shut up. Stupid Alexa. <laughs>